Hello YouTube and welcome back to another 3D Ross tutorial. In this video it's somewhat of a follow up video from the zoom in tutorial using the FOV slider. Um, so before I showed you how to zoom in and out just like this. But as some people pointed out the problem arises if you have an FOV slider. So let's say if your FOV is like this 45 and now you want to zoom in and out. We use the timeline to go from one FOV, say 90, to 45. So if we zoomed in then, it would flick back to 90 even though your FOV is 45. Um, instead of it doing that, we want to zoom in from your current FOV, no matter what it is. So in this tutorial, I'll show you how to do that. So let's dive right in. So, in our previous video, I'll link in the top right here, we used the right mouse button, we checked if we were already zooming in. Um, if we weren't, then uh, make it so we are zooming in, and then play this timeline, and this timeline would have had a value from 90 to 45, and then the output value from 90 to 45 would be in this field of view. So we'd go from 90 at the top down to 45 at the bottom over a set period of time But the problem with that is what happens if your initial field of view isn't 90 or if it's not definite because it could be set by the player Well to do that we can use a value between 1 and 0 so um, Yeah, I'll put a timestamp here now if you want to skip past it But I'm just going to do redo this part for people who don't want to go back to the other video and watch it But I'll do this super quickly. So basically in our first person character so you just select the first person character in the scene go to edit blueprint open blueprint and then I just right clicked and typed in right mouse button or whichever button you want to use to zoom in and then I created a branch holding down B and left clicking so when we press right mouse button we want to check if something is true or false and we want to check if we're zooming in. So we're going to have a variable to handle that to keep track of it. So I'm going to call this is zoom question mark. And I'm going to change the variable type to a boolean because it's a yes or no, true or false kind of variable. And we'll set the default to no. Uh, so we shall drag that in and we shall get the zoom and plug that into the condition. So, if zoom is true, so we're going to get is zooming and we're going to set it. So if zoom is already true, we're going to then zoom out, which means we want to set is zoom to false. And we want to do another set. If zoom is currently, if we're currently not zooming, then we want to zoom in. So we want to set is zooming to true. And now we want a timeline to handle the zooming in. So add timeline. I'm just going to call it zoom and when we want to zoom in we're going to play when we want to zoom out we're going to reverse simple enough and then before we can create a float track and then we just shift left click to create a point I'm going to start from zero and then here before we put an initial value of say 90 because that could be the value of the FOV. Instead, we're going to start from zero this time. So I'll just put the values now so you can see how we had it set up before. So zero, 90, shift left click, and then after, I don't know, one second, we're going to change it to 45. And because our timeline's one second long, we're just going to set the length to one second. And that just reduces our timeline length. And then on update, set FOV. So we want to set the field of view of the camera. Field of view. We want to set the field of view of the first person camera on update. And the output of our track. So if we double click to open our timeline again, if we rename this track um, FOV. And then our FOV output, 
So whatever value is coming out of the value of this track is going to change to our FOV. So if I save that and play it now, when we left click, we zoom in over one second from 90 to 45. We right click and we go from 45 to 90. So we zoom back out. So now we've got that, what we had in the other tutorial. Um, if the people fast forwarded who've seen the other tutorial, they can jump in now at this point. So we're going to double click to open our timeline again. And if we get our first point, I'm just going to delete it instead of zooming out. So we'll just do another float. I'm just going to call it FOV again. FOV 1. Uh, and I'm going to shift left click, time 0. I'm also going to set the value to 0. This is going to be used as an alpha track. Shift left click again and we'll get do the time one second. So after one second, we'll set the value to one. So basically, we're setting zero as our initial state and one as our final state. And then we'll control that with a lerp. That way we can draw from other values, not just hard baked into our graph. So if we go back to the event graph and uh, just diff break this pin. We get our FOV1 and we plug it into the field view. Uh, now it's going to go from, so now, for example, this is going to be broken, but now I'm 190, and if we right click, it's going to snap to 1 and then zoom, uh, snap to 0, sorry, and then fade between 1 to 1 over 1 second, which is obviously not what we want. We want to know what our current FOV value is. So I'm just going to set up something super quick to mimic an FOV slider. So I'm just going to right click, type in 1 for the 1 key, right click 2 key, right click 3 key. Uh, and I'm just going to use these to set the FOV. So if I bring off that and set, set field of view of the first person camera, and uh, let's just We'll pretend this is the slider. So one set our field of view to forty-five. Um, two set our field of view to sixty-five, and then three sets it to my personal favorite ninety. So this is like an FOV slider you'd have in your settings menu. So one, two, three. It snaps between them. Yep, just like that. So now we have that, um, go back now our first person character and I'm just going to do a draw just so we know what's going on. So if I press the J key um, and I'm going to print a string, this is just for debugging purposes. Um, and I'm going to get the field of view, field of view. Um, untick context and can we get field of view get FOV oh, once the camera manager that's going to make our script a bit longer um, view camera component get field of view is that correct yeah so now if I compile and play the game if I press G in the top left corner and see it says 90. If I press 1 to go to our 45 field of view and spam G, it'll let us know that we're 45. The same with 2 and 65. That way we just know what FOV we're currently at. So from here we want to set up our FOV so we can change it by a certain amount. To do this, I'm going to create a variable called initial FOV, or to make it more sense for this context, I'm going to call it before, before zoom FOV. So this is our field of view before we're zooming in using the zoom in function. And I'm just going to create this as a float. I could do an integer, whole numbers, uh, but just do a float so it's smoother. Um, and so it's initially set up because this will only update wherever we tell it to update. Um, 
to make sure we got this right we can add it to the event begin play that way it sets this equal to our initial fov but we can just check it when we want to zoom in um, so i'll just do this part first so before zoom fov um, we want to set it we want to set our zoom before um, our FOV before zoom, so before the zoom happens um, we want to set it to what our current camera's field of view is so just like we did up here we want to get the field of view of our first person camera and we're setting the current field of view to this, we're setting this variable to the current field of view and the reason we don't want to directly reference our current camera's field of view is because as we update it, that value is then going to update and then we're just going to be in an infinite loop. So I'm just going to compile and save that. So once this timeline ends, we want to change our field of view. So I'm going to create a loop, a linear interpolate, and that's going to interpolate between two values. So we're going to use the FOV um, from the timeline as our alpha so 0 being A and 1 being B and the values between that it will smoothly interpolate using this timeline so our initial value is going to be the, the current field view of the first person camera but just so things aren't going to get messy um, I'm going to just get the before zoom FOV and I'm just going to set a to that. Now B, we want to get our before zoom FOV and we want to minus, so float minus float. And here we can define what we want to minus by to zoom in. So let's just say 25 and plug that into B. Now here you can do it for um, whatever value you want so if you want it to always zoom in by the same amount regardless of field of view um, then you can just add an integer here or a float um, using a variable or you can just type it straight into the loop uh, so say if you've got weapons you can use the FOV variable for that specific weapon here uh, but I'm just going to take our current one and minus it by 25. And then I'm going to input that into the set field of view. So now if I play and I right click, we zoom in over one second. Right click, we zoom out over one second by 25. So if I press J now, it says our field of view is 90. If I right click, it says our field of view is 65. And if as we're zooming out, I spam J, you can see our field of view changing over time. Now, see if I press 1 and we start at initial 45, instead of it snapping back to 90 to then zoom into the desired amount, we right click and we still zoom in by, we still change by another 25 FOV. And we zoom back out to our initial 45 rather than a hard coded number. And this just kind of um, eliminates a lot of problems that you might bump into if you do hard code it. Um, but it might be best to um, not minus this number but rather set it to a specific value. So, see if we were at 90, we zoom into 45. Uh, say if we're at 65 we still zoom in to 45 that way we're not getting a ridiculous zoom uh, like we would and then obviously 45 won't do anything because it stays the same um, if you want to do minus I would um, recommend setting a maximum end cap so say if like we got this value um, we, we wouldn't want to make this less um, so yeah, I, I would keep an eye on this, maybe set a, a cap further along here, but that's probably uh, more than this tutorial should probably go into. Um, but yeah, you can probably look into that yourself. Um, 
but yeah, you you want to set a limit on this. Say if you're already at 25, you don't want to um, minus your field of view by 30. Um, so yeah, you just want to keep an eye on that. But um, yeah, this should kind of solve some issues that people were having with the initial um, zoom in. Um, I think I've covered everything. I just did this tutorial uh, off the cuff first take, so I hope it's explained um, enough. Um, I do appreciate that I went through pretty quickly, so if you want a more slower drawed back one, please do let me know. Um, and if you need any help, just let me know in the comments if it worked for you or not. And I will see you in the next video. Thank you.